In two years and over 30,000 miles in our Class B RV, we haven't had a spare until now. In this video, I'm going to explain why we traveled those two years without a spare, why we recently sourced a spare tire for our Class B RV, and at the end of the video, for those of you with or without a spare, I'm going to share some tools, tips, and resources to help keep you on the road in case of that dreaded flat tire. The first thought a lot of you must have had when I said we've traveled the last two years without a spare tire is that you must be crazy. And I would agree with you. I think a spare tire is essential. So much so that when we were full timing starting back in 2015 for six and a half years, we always carried a spare. We even went through all the hassle to get a spare tire for our Class A motorhome. We had to go and find a spare tire carrier that worked with our RV that would allow us to still tow our vehicle and source the tire and rim for that Class A RV, which was extremely difficult. Since then, we've had spare tires on all of our other RVs up into the Ford Transit camper van that we have now. Our transit camper van did not come with a spare because Storyteller Overland actually puts larger wheels and tires on that vehicle, which means that these don't fit in the spare tire well that's underneath the back of the vehicle. So if you're going to carry a spare, you have to figure out a way to do that. A lot of people do that with door mounted racks, which at the time when we got our van weren't really all that popular, or you put this inside the van. We did put the factory wheels and tires back on our transit along with the factory spare to see what those were like, but we didn't like the way they looked. Plus those tires didn't have the aggressive tread pattern that we were looking for out of an all-terrain tire. So what we ultimately decided to do was just hit the road without a spare for a few reasons. First, we weren't living out of the van full time. This meant that if we were down for some reason, we could always fly home. If we had to get the van towed someplace, it, we weren't going to be out of our full-time house. The second reason is we have the tools and resources we need in order to repair a tire in the field. We carry a very extensive tire repair kit, which allows me to fix things like a sidewall tear, a puncture in the tire. I even have the tools and resources I need in order to get a tire completely off the rim in order to do those repairs. I also took a class to teach me how to do all of that. And we do carry an air compressor so we can air our tires back up when we need to. Now I will include links of all of this equipment down in the description below and I'll talk a bit more about it at the end of this video. The nice thing about all of those tools is that even if we were off grid and we tore a sidewall for example, we'd be able to at least repair that tire in order to get us back to civilization and within cell phone range so that we could get towed someplace to get the tire repaired or just get a new tire altogether. That said, we finally sourced a spare for our transit. The reason for this is because next year we have a trip going up to Alaska. We figured if you need a spare anywhere, it's on the roads up to Alaska. So we finally sourced ours through Flare Space. This was a much easier process because we could just go online and order one than it was for our Class A RV where we had to source all the different components and put it all together. Flare Space made it really easy because they have the wheels and tires for the transits as well as sprinters. In terms of carrying the spare, what we've decided to do is just put it in the back of our van. We have a storage rack in the back of our van and this tire fits perfectly between the storage rack and the back door. And I simply tie it down with a strap to keep it from moving around in the back while we're driving. The only downside of doing this, especially with a new tire, is that it will off gas for a while so you'll get that new tire smell in your RV. I would suggest if you're planning on carrying a tire inside your RV, plan to put aside some time to let this sit outside or in a garage so it can off gas before you travel with it. In terms of resources for carrying a spare for your RV, always read the user manual for your RV in that vehicle. It will go through the different specifications, types of tires, tire size, etc. Now with an all wheel drive vehicle like our Transit, the user manual states that all four wheels have to be the same size. If we put a spare on that's a different size, then it is going to affect the all-wheel drive system and could cause damage if we drive too far or too fast on that spare. One way around this is for us to actually rotate our spare in. With the 30,000 miles we've already put on our van, the tires that came with it are too worn down for us to rotate this in since this is a new tire. So our plan for this is that 
we will use it if we have to and it will get us out of a situation to a repair shop where we can get new tires. When we get all new tires, we'll start rotating our spare in so that we always have a spare that we can use for a longer distance. The next resource, which I would recommend for anyone, and this is regardless of whether or not you have an RV, is that you take a class on how to remove, repair, and replace a tire on your vehicle. There are a number of places where you can take a class to learn specifically off-road tire repair. There are also books out there and I will link to a great one in the description below. And I was able to take a class myself and I will say that class has given me the confidence I need in order to repair a tire out in the field in many different conditions. The class taught me how to properly jack a vehicle up when you're off-road and a lot of things to watch out for, getting that wheel and tire off, actually taking the tire off of the rim and repairing it, then getting it back on, seating the bead the proper way, and getting yourself out of that situation and to a destination where, if needed, you can get a new tire. In terms of tools, as I mentioned earlier, the one tool we always carry with us is an air compressor. We use this in our last camper as well as our Class A RV because you never know when you're gonna to have to add air to a tire. And especially larger tires that require a higher PSI, especially in the Class A motorhomes. We actually found when we pulled up to a gas station once that we tried airing up one of our Class A RV tires and found the pressure was actually going down rather than going up. The next tool would be a tire repair kit. Now having a tire repair kit is great but it doesn't really work unless you have the knowledge and the skills to put it to use. So I would say definitely take a class, read a book before buying a kit so that you understand what tools you want in that kit in order to repair a tire in the field. Make sure that you have a jack that is able to lift your vehicle high enough off the ground that you can remove the wheel and tire. A lot of lifted vehicles or vehicles with larger wheels and tires come with factory jacks that aren't tall enough to get them high enough into the air to remove that wheel and tire. Once you get the vehicle jacked up, you're also gonna to need to get that wheel and tire off, which means having a properly sized lug wrench. The lug wrench that came with your vehicle may not necessarily fit the aftermarket wheels you have, along with any specialty lug nuts that you're using. For example, on our F-350, the lug wrench that came with the vehicle is too big in diameter to get into the holes of our aftermarket wheels. I would advise also carrying a torque wrench with you and checking the torque on those nuts afterwards and as you go down the road 100 or so miles later. The last tool is yourself. It's gaining the knowledge you need to change your tire as well as making sure that you're physically able to. These tires weigh in at over 50 pounds and some are even more than that. Make sure that you can lift your spare tire and remove the tire from your vehicle. You also wanna make sure that you're able to take off the lug nuts with whatever wrench that you're using. It may require that you get a large breaker bar so that you're better able to use leverage to do that because some of these lug nuts can be torqued to over 150 pounds. And the final resource and tool is roadside assistance. A lot of vehicles these days come with roadside assistance standard as part of their warranty. And you can buy roadside assistance plans aftermarket. Also have the number of a tow company or something that if you are going off-road in an area that you're able to call them and if something happens off-road, they can come and get you. A lot of standard tow companies don't have the capacity to do that, so make sure that if you're going off-grid that there's a company that can handle that. Since we started RVing in 2015, the only time we've had a flat tire is in our Jeep Wrangler. And luckily, the Jeep came with a spare, which I was able to get on and then take that wheel in to get repaired. Since then, we haven't had any issues, knock on wood, but in case we do, we wanna be the best prepared possible, which is why we finally went out and got ourselves a spare. We carry the air compressor. We have the tools and knowledge to repair the tire if needed and Worst case, we always have our cell phone and hopefully there's someone we can call to come help us. So the question is, do you really need a spare tire? At the end of the day, I would say a spare tire is a great insurance policy as well as peace of mind. Despite the tools and resources that we've carried with us in the last 30,000 miles, not having a spare has been something that's been in the back of my head in case we had a problem where our toolkit just didn't cover the problem. One other downside of not having a spare 
is that if you have a catastrophic failure of the tire as you're going down the highway, you could potentially damage your rim. And now you have to source not only a new tire, but also a new rim, which could have you down for quite a while. Also, if you're off-grid and you have a catastrophic tire failure, it might be hard to get someone out there and you may not have cell service in order to call a tow service to come get you. As we're getting ready for our next trip, having a spare is one less thing I need to worry about as we drive down the road. I hope this video has been useful for you and you've learned a thing or two. Don't forget that all of the things I talked about in today's video, I will link to in the description below. I would love to know down in the comments below if you carry a spare or not. And if you don't carry a spare, what tools and resources do you have on hand to fix a flat tire if you're caught out in the middle of nowhere and you can't call someone to come help you? That is it for this video. If you enjoyed this and you want to watch more, check out our channel, We're the Russos, and we'll see you next time. Bye. This video is sponsored by Flare Space.